for part two of the garden tours, I figured I would show you guys the veggie garden. If you're new here, my name's Kara. This is Bluebird Homestead. We have two different areas for our vegetable gardens. We have this area over here, which we kind of call our raised bed gardens. And then across our driveway over here, we have another big in-ground space that's about, I don't know, 100 by 100 approximately. So let's start over here with this side. If you can see behind me, these sunflowers are showing off this morning. So let's go show you those. This is kind of my dedicated flower bed. As you can see, the sunflowers are massive. I don't know if it's going to pick up on the camera, but there's just a constant buzz of bees enjoying these sunflowers. Right below the sunflowers here in this bed, we have some dahlias. These dahlias have several buds on them, and this one actually looks like it's just about to start opening up. We have a few more buds starting to form. And this one's looking like it's getting ready. We also have some beautiful zinnias growing. I love the height on this one. I think that's really pretty. I originally planted zinnias all along the middle of this flower bed here, and only these two came up, which I'm kind of sad about. We have about 100 days left in our growing season right now, so I went ahead and re-sowed them this past week. So hopefully the new batch comes up. These zinnia seeds are ones that I saved from last year. I have some pompous plume coming up, and these are red amaranth. The Japanese beetles have really been chewing on these and the zinnias. You can see they kind of skeletonize the leaves. Thankfully, they've just started to die down. They were absolutely covering all the plants. On the back side of this L shape and these other two beds are our strawberries. Ryan and I just came through and weeded these strawberries last night and I don't see any new berries on them yet at the moment. Here in this front bed, we have some red amaranth growing that is almost six foot tall. It's starting to put on some seed heads that I think are really pretty. I love the deep, vibrant red color of these leaves. Unfortunately, as you can see, there's lots of holes and damage from the Japanese beetles. There are a couple of zinnias in this bed over here that did come up as well. I think this one's really pretty. I also had a volunteer tomato plant come up from last year. I'm really surprised. It's kind of supporting itself in between the amaranth and the zinnias, and I haven't had to trellis it. It's just standing up nice and tall. So making our way into the fenced area of the garden, in these front beds here, when we first walk in, I'm letting some stuff go to seed so that I can collect the seeds. One of my favorite tomatoes last year and my mom's favorite tomato that I grew last year was called the Midnight Snacker. And I was disappointed because I couldn't find the seeds or the plants anywhere. But here I have what I believe to be the Midnight Snacker that self-seeded and grew itself. There are lots of little cherry tomatoes starting to grow on this. So that was a happy surprise. It uh, is just growing next to the raised bed in the rocks. So it kind of use some bamboo stakes to give it some support here. And we have some, some volunteer tomatoes. Like I mentioned, the Japanese beetles have been terrible. So I have several of these Japanese beetle bags hanging up in different areas of the garden to hopefully reduce that pressure. It does seem that the Japanese beetles have started to die back this week though. I have two arch cattle panels here that I just have screwed into the sides of the raised beds in the dirt that I had sugar snap peas on. This week I came through and ripped those out because they were starting to suffer in the heat and I wanted to give the other veggies I have growing on there some more sunlight and space to grow. On this first cattle panel here, I have cucamelons, which I think look just adorable. This is my first year growing these cucamelons. Now, I think they kind of are like a watered down cucumber I've only tried a couple of them so far, even if you don't like the flavor. You have to admit that they're really cute. They look like a little miniature watermelon. 
And as you can see, it's just working its way up and over the cattle panel here. It's doing a pretty good job on its own to trellis itself, but every once in a while, I'll just come in here, like this one's kind of fallen down and help give it some guidance to reach the trellis again. Then on this arch cattle panel, I have green beans growing. I started these green beans while the sugar snap peas were still here. And I carefully ripped out the sugar snap peas to give the green beans some room to grow. It makes for harvesting much easier and I think it looks really pretty too. I have some marigolds planted in most of the corners of each bed. Green beans are growing here. I do need to come in and harvest a bunch of these. I'll do that a little later this afternoon. This is some broccoli that I'm just kind of, well, there, see there's some Japanese beetles. This is some broccoli that I have just let flower and go to seed because the bees have really been enjoying it. I recently harvested a bunch of garlic, which you can see in my last video, out of these three beds. That garlic is curing now, and since I have the free space, I have direct sowed a few other veggies that I'll show you when they start to come up. In this bed here behind me, I have a big zucchini plant, a nasturtium, some more amaranth, rosemary, a little bit of thyme. Oh. And we have some zucchini that needs harvested. I come out here and harvest zucchini just about every day. They really do grow overnight. In these two beds here, I have onions, which are ready to be harvested. You know they're ready to be harvested when their tops kind of flop over like this and they're squishy around the base. I'll be filming a harvesting video for you guys either today or tomorrow and we'll see how all these look. They're quite large, so stay tuned for that. I have volunteer ground cherries from last year that are growing like crazy here, and I just kinda let them be and we'll harvest off of them. You can tell they're ready when they fall to the ground, hence the name ground cherry. There's a little husk here and you pop them open like that. You don't wanna eat the husk, just eat the fruit on the inside. They have a very tropical taste, I think, kind of mixed between like a pineapple and a cherry tomato. I really like them. Just to be real with you guys, I have a lot of weeds growing in the garden. All of these are onions and I plan on harvesting the onions. So I've just been kind of letting the grass grow and I'll deal with it when I rip them all out of the ground. At the end of each of these in-ground spaces, I have some sunflowers growing. Gardening is a passion of mine and a hobby and I really do love it, but I'm a mom first and foremost. So I'm gonna be spending time with my kids versus weeding the garden. That doesn't mean we can't still have a ton of food despite the grass. <laughs> this is our row of cherry tomatoes. These cute little red currant tomatoes have been really yummy. These are indigo cherry tomatoes. You can tell they're ready when they just kind of pop off the vine. They'll go from a kind of green color on the bottom to a dark red on the bottom. But when you're looking at them from the top, they all look the same. <laughs> but I have a massive tomato here that is almost ready to pick. I've been waiting on it and it looks so good. I might actually go ahead and harvest it that is a massive tomato. It looks like it's two blossoms that fused together. Look at that. I went ahead and harvested this tomato because I was afraid it was just gonna fall off and crack open on the ground. These are my potatoes here. You can see they're starting to flower there. I also forgot to show you guys. I have several red paprika peppers growing. I'm gonna give you guys a super speedy tour of this in-ground space over here. We have some beautiful zinnias growing here at the ends of the rows. I have a few Kajari melons growing here. Several rows of tomatoes. Here's some beautiful cherry tomatoes. Looks like there's a cucumber ready. There's another one down here. Oh, 
we've got quite a few cucumbers actually. I've got lots to share. And the tomatoes growing down here. Some more cherries. Then in this space over here, we have a row of green beans, several squash plants, and then lots of watermelon. I just have to show you guys some of the watermelon we have growing. So Ryan and I have been focusing just on weeding around the individual plants, not necessarily in between from plant to plant. Here's a little watermelon. <laughs> I think this one is so cute. This is called a moon and stars watermelon. It has these little polka dots on it, kind of like constellations or stars. This one's turning yellow. I just fertilized it and I've been watering it more. I don't know what's going on with that one because the one right next to it's very healthy. Here's a few more baby ones growing. We also have some corn growing along the back end there, but no ears of corn yet to be harvested. I have a few little baby butternut squashes, little zucchini here. Some green beans. Well, that does it for the garden tour. I have a meeting I have to get to. So sorry, this was a little shorter tour of the in-ground space over here. But as you can see, we have lots of watermelon growing and hopefully we'll be harvesting some soon here in the upcoming weeks. Hope you all have a great day. Again, my name's Kara. This is Bluebird Homestead. Bye y'all. Mm -hmm.